So I've been meaning to get to this video about why I think Biden pulled out of Afghanistan, at least two reasons I can think of. I've been distracted by relationship, work, family issues, girlfriend, and I've been getting I've been getting extra high lately. Um so here's why I think Biden pulled us out of Afghanistan, at least two reasons. Number one, it's most obvious, he was around during Vietnam. He got elected in a 1972 election, and this was as we were pulling out Vietnam, and so he was an adult. I think he turned, yeah, he turned 18 in 1960. I don't know if the law in Delaware allowed him to vote for Kennedy, but I hope they did. Um, the, the, the amendment that allowed you to vote at 18 didn't pass until like the early 70s. Um, but he was around during Vietnam. He saw the bullshit. He saw like we're, we're in this country that uh, we've escalated tensions in this war, and nothing. We're getting nothing from it except dead Americans. And we just see. And he saw how the media was just like, "Stay in Vietnam. Stay in Vietnam. Stay in Saigon. Saigon will fall." The 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 less like Vietnam and Afghanistan are, are like perfectly. Um, uh, similar, like the only difference is if Kennedy had lived, and, and he obviously would have won in '64, like we would have kept South Vietnam at least because he wouldn't have escalated. It was Johnson who escalated this, escalated the shit over there. Today we'd still have South Vietnam. He would not have escalated this. He would have just simply had a campaign to fight the Viet Cong. The reason we lost Vietnam is because Johnson escalated it into a full-on offensive war with North Vietnam. So. Second reason, and I think this, I don't know if this is more than his experience with Vietnam or it simply coincides with it. Joe Biden is the first um, president since I was born in 93. He's our first president in a while, in my whole life, to have veteran, war veterans for son. Now, he is the, now Trump is the first president in my lifetime to have sons, but they're all, but all except for Barron, I don't know about him. The other two are pieces of shit who never, who would never, uh, uh, serve their country. Like even, but his, but Joe Biden's two sons did serve in the military. Now, Hunter was kicked out for drugs, which I think is stupid. But he was in the Navy. Uh, I think Bo Biden was in like the Army, maybe the National Guard, and he was sent over to Iraq, and he actually is a combat veteran. And so they, so I don't know about Hunter, but Bo came, would come back, um, on leave or something and tell his father, you know, all these stories about what's going on over there. And, you know, and Joe Biden would be like, this is just like Vietnam, all this death and destruction, and we're getting nothing from it. And so here's another thing. It, it, um, back during the surge in 2009, 2011, Joe Biden was opposed to that. Because you got to understand something, just like what we saw with the January 6th phone call that I talked about while I was high off my ass. <laughs> um, the vice presidents and, pre and the presidents don't always agree on everything. Johnson disagreed with Kennedy on, on the strategy of passing the Civil Rights Act and other things. You know, in the in the movie LBJ, you show him like you can't do this. It will it will alienate Southern voters. But then suddenly he was president. And he just goes, fuck it. Why not? I don't know. Uh, George H. W. Bush disagreed with Reagan about um, tax cuts for rich. He, he Bush is the one who coined it, voodoo economics during the eighties primary. Now, Carl Kalinske says another reason is because he wants like one up Obama. Look, if this was Trump or Pence, maybe. But I don't. I just don't see that. Biden doesn't seem like a petty individual trying to one up someone, at least in that sort of sense. Like, maybe trying to, um, like, hey, I'm going to do better than you did when it comes to Iraq and Afghanistan. But not in that sort of, like, petty way. Like, I understand that the vice presidency, John Lyndon Johnson is proof um, that sometimes the vice presidency is treated as, um, like, you're not important. Like, like you're just a, you're just a standing guy, like, in case, the, in case Obama croaks or something or gets assassinated more like, because, you know, a lot of racists were trying to kill him. Um, there was some, there was an actual, um, racist Klansman, someone who tried to kill President-elect Obama with a dirty bomb until his wife shot him. Episode of uh, Deadly Women. I'm not saying that 
Biden is in any way like John F. Kennedy. I'm guessing Biden understands that, like Kennedy did, that not every single situation results in American victory. Sometimes, so, some things just can't be solved with boom, boom, shooty, shooty, shoot him up or occupation. It's, and I guess he just looked at, you know, how Afghanistan, no one can conquer it. Now we did conquer it. I disagree with what Kyle Kalinske said in that uh, he he cited one person who said that the Taliban controlled more more of Afghanistan than when we went in. That's not true, Kalinsky, because here's the thing. Before we went in, the Taliban controlled all of Afghanistan except for some parts in the north. Which is why they had this thing called the Northern Alliance. Who, by the way, the leader was assassinated two days before 9-11. It was like, whoa. Uh, now, the invasion of Afghanistan was like the last thing I ever gave Bush credit for. Because I thought it was like, okay, he's horrible about everything except Afghanistan. But now I'm hearing, now I'm hearing some people say that the Taliban offered the U.S. government Osama bin Laden. Like, we'll give you this if you don't invade us, like, multiple times, but, you know, that Bush went in anyway because, you know, military-industrial complex, you know, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Raytheon, blah, 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 campaign donations, uh, MTC, I mean, MIC, military-industrial complex, MIC. Now, I haven't bothered to look up if, if they did, if it's confirmed, but if that's true, I, and I wouldn't put it past Bush. Because, I mean, he did Iraq. He's like, oh, they're involved in 9-11. No, they weren't. Oh, well, they have weapons of mass destruction. No, they don't. Well, they're a bad guy. It's like, they, they literally just try to look for any justification for Iraq. You know. And technically, Obama did Iraq and Iraq. He just went back in once ISIS rose. Like, I think if ISIS hadn't rose, risen, which wouldn't have happened if we hadn't gone in in the first place, um, yeah, we, would have, we wouldn't be in Iraq. Now, Biden did incorrectly say that I'm the first president in 20 years not to preside over four. No, Mr. President, you're wrong. We're we're still in Iraq. We're still in Syria. We're still bombing eight different countries. We just you just happen to take Afghanistan off the list. And hey, credit where credit is due. Uh, you know, I think we should have just gotten out the fuck out immediately, like when he announced it. Like, hey, just stick to Trump's plan, except get everyone out. Look, for Afghan Taliban is not a threat to us. The Taliban is like a guerrilla army. They're sort of like the French resist, a uh, more disgusting Islamic version of the French resistance. Like, they're not interested in, they're not global jihadists like ISIS or, or Al-Qaeda. Like, look are, look, are they terrible? Of course they are. I've seen videos of them executing women for not wearing a hijab. There's an actual video of them, of a guy beating a bunch of women with a stick from pre, from pre-9-11 era. But, first of all, we're in a pandemic, we have crumbling infrastructure, we have homeless people in the streets, we got homeless veterans, we've got so much wrong with this country, even though we are not a country founded on Judeo-Christian values, as some idiots like to claim. For you Christians, who love to claim that, remember that old verse? Remove the log from your eye before you try to remove the splinter from another's. Let's remove the log from our eye, which is covid Crumbling infrastructure, crumbling and corrupt healthcare, corrupt tax system, police brutality, all sorts of things that we have wrong with this country. Not immigration, but treatment of immigrants. That's, we have a problem with that. Uh, before we go dealing with the Taliban. The Taliban has no intention of coming in our borders. They have no intention of attacking us. Sure, some of them might want some payback for 20 years of occupation, but they're going to be like, hey, Mahmoud. Shut up. They gave us our country. We had an agreement. We signed the treaty. They gave us our country back. Just leave them alone. We have no interest. We're not we're not those crazies with Al Qaeda. Seriously, they're not globalists. It wasn't Al Taliban that attacked us. Al Qaeda used their back used their background for for their shit and then they did 9 eleven. The Taliban, other than yeah, okay, you can stay here. Fine. Now and they should have paid for that. And they did. A lot. There is no Al-Qaeda in Taliban. And Al-Qaeda is but a shadow of its former glory. Not that it was glorious or anything, but you get the, but you get the point. But yeah, 
this is one of the few things I give Biden credit for, getting tough on COVID and pulling us out of Afghanistan. And not just pulling out of Afghanistan, but pulling out of Afghanistan, resisting all the calls to stay in or go back in and saying, suck it, Jack. Just suck it. We're getting out of Afghanistan. By the way, Afghanistan is just like Vietnam, not just in, in the circumstances, but also it's the reverse of Vietnam. Vietnam was a war started by the Democrats that was ended by the Republicans. This is a, uh, Afghanistan is a war started by the Republicans on lies, just like Vietnam, uh, ended by a Democrat. It's a reverse. So, so, so for you boomers and silent generation people who protested Vietnam, we know what that's like now. We don't know what Vietnam was like precisely because obviously we weren't there. We weren't even, we wouldn't even born, we wouldn't even be born until the 80s. And I'm not even from the 80s. But we do know what, similar to what it's like. As in, Afghanistan is the 20, 20th, 21st century's Vietnam. Yeah. So, we know what it's like now. But thankfully it's over, and I hope, pray to God, that I don't think he will, but he surprised me. That he will end Iraq and Syria. Here's the thing. When Biden won and when Biden was sworn in, I had no in, in the indication that he would end our involvement in Afghanistan. But then all of a sudden I heard, oh, Biden's going to pull us out of Vietnam. I mean, Afghanistan. The new Vietnam, which is Afghanistan. Shit. I, and to be fair, I was skeptical. I thought, oh, he's going to find his way to wiggle his way out of it. And he uh, stuck to it. And I was like, well, damn, President Biden. You did it. Credit to you. I don't, I, I, because of the way people reacted to Iraq and coming I mean, to Afghanistan withdrawal, I don't think he'll pull out Iraq or Syria. But, like I said a couple of seconds ago, it could surprise me. Let's hope. Let's hope he is the anti war president he's portraying himself to be. Now, I'm going to go play some uh, Cold War. Uh, stay awesome, stay progressive, and may the force be with you.